former Prime Minister Boris Johnson was turned away from his local polling station yesterday after forgetting to bring his ID. Of course, new rules requiring photo ID to vote were introduced by his own government in the Elections Act 2022, with the change being rolled out for the first time last year. Well, I'm now joined by Tom Brake, who's the director of Unlock Democracy, to discuss this. So, Tom, we were told that this wouldn't impact people's ability to vote. And lo and behold, the bloke who brought it in proved us wrong. Indeed. And um, whilst clearly it's uh, slightly embarrassing for our former prime minister who introduced the law uh, to fall foul of it initially, I think perhaps more seriously, we think there will probably be something like 20,000 people who will have turned up at a polling station and been turned away and not returned to vote. And I think that is a significant issue. And is, is that verified? Is that proven? Because we've been hearing anecdotes. And it seems to be a lot of elderly people forgetting their ID, who you'd think naturally will be more predisposed to vote Conservative. Is there any data or evidence of the particular types of people who are being impacted? We heard a lot of the disenfranchised, be the poorest. Is that coming to pass in reality? In Northern Ireland, where this was brought in, we didn't see really anything like that happening. Well, I mean, first of all, it's been introduced uh, in Northern Ireland for, for a number of years, and they did it in, in two phases. So they introduced ID, and then they introduced photographic voter ID. But what we do know as a fact is that in May last year, when this was rolled out for the first time, it was documented that there were 14,000 people who turned up at a polling station uh, were turned away and did not return to vote. Now, in those elections last year, there were far, there were fewer people voting, and that's why uh, extrapolating last year to this year, probably something like twenty thousand people uh, will be the number. Now, we won't know that until the returning officers have provided us information, but they will do that within a couple of months' time, and then we'll know the scale of the problem. Okay, great. Well, when that data comes in, Tom Brake, we'd love to have you back on. It's a serious topic. Thanks for joining us on the show. Tom Brake, Director of Unlock Democracy. Always a pleasure. Now, I'm delighted to say I'm joined in the studio by my panel, and that's the former editor of Labour List, Peter Edwards, and NHS GP and author Dr. Rennie Hornenkamp. Thank you both for joining us. Let's start on that topic, Peter, of voter ID. Now, I know something that rankled the political left, pushing back against this. In particular, the line is it will impact Labour voters the most. Yet Boris Johnson and Tory MP Tom Hunt forgot their ID yesterday. Is there any proof that it actually does impact Labour voters more? It impacts poorer voters more, and historically they've tended to be uh, Labour voters, as that changed a bit in recent years. There is proof, for example, that um, poorer people have less ID. It's a fact that having a passport, one of the forms of ID, costs 85 quid. Uh, we know many people don't have passport. You're less likely to have 85 quid to spare if you're poor. Moreover, picking up what Tom Brake said, the government that brought this in, the Johnson government, knew this would happen. This was done cynically because they expected that... Um, in the name of cleaning up political participation, which is pretty clean anyway relative to other countries, it would hit poorer turnout, therefore hit the Labour turnout. René, do you think there's any, any veracity in this? I mean, if you need ID to buy a beer or a packet of cigs, surely you should have ID to vote. I think this is nonsense, and I think we absolutely should know who's voting. It's the most important thing that we do in this country. And, you know, to say that poorer people can't have a passport, poorer people drive more cars, so they'll have a driving licence. There are 27 things that you can actually use, even a bus pass, to bring to vote. And, you know, I think this is just an excuse. You can also apply on the day for an emergency proxy vote. You can apply for a certificate to show this is a nonsense. We need people. We need to know who's voting. More importantly, Martin, we need to know who's postal voting. Mm. I'm one of those people. No voter ID needed. Mm. 